Daggerfall sits in the region of Glenumbra, and is the capital of its own namesake kingdom. The city itself was founded upon a history of espionage, shadowy activity, and economic prosperity. Founded in 246 of the First Era by the Nords who settled down during the Skyrim conquests, they managed to hold the city for quite some time, a century in fact. And the city did fairly well under their control, and for a century, Daggerfall quickly became an economic powerhouse and prospered under the Nordic control. The reason Skyrim didn't maintain their holdings is because of the War of Secession, which cost the Nordic Empire all their holdings outside of Skyrim. Yet, during this century, Daggerfall, as I said, prospered, gaining such an advantage that once they gained their independence, they held an opportunistic advantage over all their neighbors, militarily, economically, and culturally, allowing them to gain dominance over everyone in their region. By 541 of the First Era, Dukorak the Black Drake led an army out of the Reach into High Rock, and they ravaged much of the province and eventually besieged Daggerfall in an attempt to complete their ravaging of the area. However, the siege would be disturbed by a contingent of heavy dragoons from Wayrest who shadowed the Horde by sea after the Horde was done with Wayrest. During the following assault that was going on between the dragoons of Wayrest and the Reachmen, the Daggerfall Knights sallied out during the siege, and to Korak the Black, Drake was killed by Emmerich of Cumberland. This would be the same Emmerich that would become the leader of the Daggerfall Covenant. King Bergamot of Daggerfall would rally his knights after the death of Dukorak and scattered the remnants of the Reachman army into the province. Two weeks later, Daggerfall, Camlorn, Shormhelm, Wayrest, and Evermore would come together and sign an alliance forming the Daggerfall Covenant with Emmerich of Cumberland at its head. Later on, during the Alliance War, Daggerfall didn't essentially play much of a part in the war itself, however, they would uphold their part of the alliance by sending troops to Wayrest to aid them in the conflict known as Rancer's War. In 582 of the Second Era, the Bloodthorn Cult would attempt to assassinate King Casimir in Castle Daggerfall to destabilize the region of Glenumbra. However, an agent of the Daggerfall Covenant would save the king's life, leading to a, a relative peaceful time in the region itself. Despite their success, it was Wayrest who assumed the mantle of the most dominant power in High Rock, yet Daggerfall remained a close second, still dominating the region of Glenumbra and maintaining a healthy rivalry with the Sentinel to control the Iliac Bay. This rivalry would actually go on to turn into somewhat of an appreciation as many of the nobility of Daggerfall would go on vacation in the city itself, along with many of the Wayrest nobles as well, something that was just interesting in itself, that they could still find appreciation amongst their enemies. In 267 of the Third Era, the city would join the coalition against the Camorran usurper, as the Empire did very little to stop Haman Camorran from his whole path of destruction. Daggerfall also has a history of fighting against the orcs, as more often than not they found themselves on the opposite side of the orcs of Orsinium, as they cooperated with other powers like those in Hammerfell and others in High Rock to disassemble any orcish stronghold in the region, and essentially they would participate in many of the sackings of Orsinium throughout history. As stated earlier, Daggerfall had a practice of tending to stick to the shadows somewhat, and this is seen when Queen Ekathiroi of Sentinel was assassinated, and it's said that it was a Daggerfall agent who would do this, however it, it's not exactly concrete here. Yet, just because they tended to stick to the shadows, it didn't mean that they weren't afraid to pick up the sword. And this is seen when King Lysandus of Daggerfall would go to war with Sentinel during the War of Betany in 402 of the Third Era. Essentially this happened because Betany would ask Daggerfall for protection against, quote, pirates and uh, bandits, end quote, and 
this led to Sentinel believing that Daggerfall was trying to one-up them. And throughout the last two decades or, or two centuries or so, the two powers had fought for Betany consistently or on and off is a better term for that. And for the time being, at least for as far as we know, two centuries, Daggerfall maintained control, or at least the Bretons maintained control for the island. During this war, Daggerfall claimed many victories and inevitably took the victory of the war and formally annexed Betany, which only solidified their control of the Iliac Bay. In the aftermath of the Warp of the West, Daggerfall under King Gothraid and Queen Abuki absorbed all of Western High Rock and was only rivaled in the Iliac Bay by Sentinel, Wayrest, and Orsinium. And these claims that they gained from the warp in the west far overshadow what was claimed during the war of Betany. It's actually insane how much land they would claim during this whole event. And this would lead them into what we have in the fourth era. Not much is known about Daggerfall in the fourth era, yet the realm still maintains its strength, influence, authority, and power in the region. Yet despite their control, there are some black spots that are beginning to form in Daggerfall. For example, the Thieves Guild have started a large presence in the area, and that's on top of a growing black market that is also forming in the region as well, exporting specifically skooma. And they also specialize in other things, but the skooma trafficking has become so widespread that they reach as far as Morrowind and Skyrim, so they get outside of the province. Nonetheless though, Daggerfall remains one of the more dominant powers in the region, and that is all we have. And yeah, it was fun covering Daggerfall, and it was... <laughs> It was fun doing High Rock. High Rock is what I really wanted to say there. High Rock was a lot of fun to cover, and it was probably what helped reinvigorate my love for doing lore just a little bit more. And with High Rock concluding, I do have a few other things planned, including a special event that will occur in January that involves something to do with this channel. No, nothing, and I don't think any big events are happening uh, on this specific day outside of what. So it's like something big on, on the channel. But uh, nonetheless, though, if you guys have any topics you want me to cover, please let me know in the comments below or in the Discord chat. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you all in the next video. It's been fun, and if you all enjoyed, give this a like, it really helps. Let's me know you enjoy it, and uh, I hope to see you around. Peace. If you enjoyed, please like this video because it really lets me know you're enjoying this content. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. The links are right here for you to click on, and the Discord chat link is right here as well. And overall, I hope you all enjoyed, and I hope to see you in the next video. Peace.